Welcome to That's Good Sports, I'm Brandon Perna, and one of the hardest hits of the day was delivered by Falcons punter slash kickoff specialist, Matt Bosher. Matt Bosher has a history of tackling the shit out of returners, did it to the Jets, and also knocked a Jets team employee on his ass as he popped up out of bounds after making his big dick hit. The only thing more embarrassing than getting laid out by a punter in the NFL is being Hugh Jackson. How did your career end, Ken John Barner? I was lit up by a punter. Had to resign in shame the next week, but I've built a nice little life for myself, selling life insurance to the dead. Matt Bosher's tackling ability was immediately updated to 99 on Madden 19. Since Monday is Christmas Eve, I'm just going to try and briefly recap the Saturday and Sunday morning NFL games here on That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here to my YouTube channel. And also this episode is sponsored by manscaped.com. Here's my commercial. I'm manscaping expert and legend Brandon Perna. And I've been growing body gardens for about 20 years now. And what I've learned is if you want the tree to look bigger, you need to keep the bushes trimmed. To do that, having the right tools is a necessity. And that's why I ditched these dangerous shears long ago and ordered my products from manscaped.com with the promo code SPORT20. That's a weird sound to make in a forest. Manscaping should be easy and convenient. And with the lawn mower, which is waterproof for easy cleaning, you can keep things smooth, avoiding turning your tree into a prickly cactus. These trimmers are designed to help you achieve the intricacy of trimming a delicate bonsai tree, while also having the power to mow down the bush next to the great redwoods. Convincing people your garden is worth taking a stroll through can be a lot of work. And that's why it's important you make sure they're happy when they finally open the gate to your yard. And even if you don't need your tree to look bigger, whoever you are, keeping a well-kept yard is the manly thing to do. It's also probably mandated by your HOA. So use my promo code SPORT20 and you'll get $20 off your first order at manscaped.com. I'm a man. We all knew the Rams would win this game. Everybody knew it. They did. But what we didn't know is Larry Fitzgerald would pull off the greatest prank of the season so far. That's the best use of smelling salts I've seen since they tried to shake the indifference out of Jay Cutler. The Baltimore Ravens defeated the Los Angeles Chargers on Saturday Night Football 22 to 10. Saturday Night Football, a phrase that sounds as foreign as backup QB, Joe Flacco. Lamar Jackson outplayed Phillip Rivers. He had more passing yards, 204 to 181, zero picks to Rivers' two interceptions, a touchdown, and a QB rating of 101. The Chargers already clinched a playoff spot, so I'm not sure how much you should read into this loss. Now, it may have only been by 23 yards, but I am very surprised Lamar Jackson threw for more yards than Phillip Rivers. Not as surprised as Phillip Rivers, though, who after the game said, 23? Heck. Even I think that's too many kids to have. Relentless. The Eagles proved that the best way to win a Super Bowl is to have the best backup QB in the NFL. The Ravens have that with Joe Flacco on the bench, and they are now currently uh, Super Bowl favorites, according to Las Vegas. The Tennessee Titans need another win next weekend and a Ravens loss to get into the playoffs. A Ravens loss is their only chance after they were able to beat Josh Johnson and the Redskins. If you missed it, Taylor Lewan went bow hunting and shot the original buck hunter, Josh Norman, causing an altercation to break out. I covered that incident last night. The Titans beat the Redskins 25-16. Could the Tampa Bay Buccaneers upset the Dallas Cowboys? No, they couldn't. They lose 27-20. And now we all get to hear Skip Bayless say, my NFC East champion Dallas Cowboys at least 400 times this week on Undisputed. Not even his family's looking forward to spending time with him this Christmas because of that. The Vikings destroy the Lions 27 to nine. Kirk Cousins tossed a Hale Rogers to Kyle Rudolph to end the half in Detroit. Uh, the Vikings protected their sixth seed playoff position with their win over the Lions. The Falcons versus the Panthers, ATL carves them up 24 to 10. K 
Cam Newton was more excited than anyone when Taylor Hyman led the Panthers on a scoring drive to start the game. Taylor Heinrich converted a bunch of third downs and then fired this touchdown pass in the back of the end zone to give the Panthers an early 7-0 lead. Just a great opening series by Taylor Lautner. Uh, Christian McCaffrey caught his 103rd catch to pass Matt Forte for the most in a season by a running back, which means we will all remember Taylor Humperdinck's name forever in the records books as he threw that pass to C-Mac. Game of the morning, Houston Texans versus Philadelphia Eagles. All the Texans had to do to keep New England from getting a first round bye was win. But with Deshaun Watson getting sacked four times and Nick Foles throwing for 471 yards and Demarius Thomas probably tearing his Achilles, this amazing touchdown catch in the back of the end zone by Vincent Smith was all for nothing as Big Dick Nick plowed his way through the Texans defense to set up another game-winning kick by Jake Elliott. Texans lose 32-30. The Giants had no business or reason to win this game, yet they played for pride or some bullshit reasons I can't understand. Uh, this game unnecessarily came down to the wire with Andrew Luck leading a game-winning touchdown drive late in the fourth quarter. Eli Manning had one minute to try and make a miracle happen but if there's anything we've learned about Eli Manning over the years, it's that his greatest weakness is hookers. Malik Hooker tricks Manning, pun intended, into throwing a game-ending interception. Colts keep their playoff hopes alive. Bengals versus Browns in the Battle of the Bastards. Cleveland wins 26-18. Baker Mayfield may have suggested he yearns for the illustrious Big Dick Player Award after rolling out the meat during this touchdown celebration. The Browns defeat Hugh Jackson twice this season, which means he finally achieved something he could not do in two years with Cleveland. Get the Browns two victories. I believed in you, Buffalo, and I, I shouldn't have. Pats win 24-12. Tom Brady played like absolute shit and yet the Bills lost by 12. Brady threw two interceptions, uh, one right through Gronk's hands, but easily cruised to victory behind close to 300 rushing yards from the five-headed monster that is Sony Michelle, Rex Burkhead, James White, Corderell Patterson, and Philip Dorsett. If you cut off one head, it will only grow back bigger, stronger, and wider. That's the Patriots way. The Packers and the New York Jets went into overtime for some reason. Packers won. Aaron Rodgers said, hey, I heard Kirk Cousins threw a me to help the Vikings beat the Lions today. Why did, why did we go into over, overtime again? Jacksonville defeats the Dolphins. Aaron Rodgers said, hey, I heard Cody Kessler threw a Blake Bortles during their victory over the Dolphins. The Jaguars did beat the Dolphins on this Ryan Tannehill pick six, making Tannehill the only QB to throw a touchdown for the Jags since Blake Bortles did it November 25th. Dolphins are officially done. And in the late games, you had the Bears versus 49ers. Besides a scuffle that broke out after a late hit on Bears quarterback Mitch kissing titties Trubisky, uh, this game basically panned out the way you thought. The Bears win, clinching everything. But you know, Nick Mullins, he's a gamer. He's playing, he's doing it, he's trying, he's Mullins, he's Nick. And finally, it was the Steelers and Saints. This game was everything you wanted it to be unless you're a Steelers fan. Now I do admire the balls on Mike Tomlin running a fake punt in the fourth quarter against a team that loves fakes more than anyone, but not as much as I admire the guy who thought he converted the fourth down, but didn't for the Steelers. Not that, that what's the opposite of a mic drop? <laughs> and it was Saints receiver Michael Thomas scoring the game winning touchdown after review to give the Saints an insurmountable 31-28 lead. I'm not going to lie, I was rooting for the Saints in this one. But with an illegal contact call late on Saints linebacker Alex Analzone, I really wanted to be able to say the Saints lose after the Steelers penetrate the anal zone. A serious mistake in the anal zone costs the Saints this game. Also, Alex Analzone looks a lot like male porn star legend Evan Stone, and if he wants to work in adult film, he won't even have to change his name. Long live Alex Anal Zone. Please subscribe here on YouTube. Enjoy your Christmas, holidays, whatever the fuck you celebrate. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, at Brandon Perna if you want to follow me there. We got one week of regular season football left, and then the playoff magic starts. My favorite time of year. NFL playoffs. Who dat?